Jacob Middleton was pretty money when he was acquired by Bill Guerin at the trade deadline. We take a look at Middleton's season with the Minnesota Wild, the potential for him to figure into the long-term plans, plus a frank discussion about the Wild's decor all today on Locked on Wild. You're locked on Wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day. And just as a reminder, Lockdown Wild is free and available wherever you listen to your podcasts. On today's episode of Lockdown Wild, we throw down the letter grade for Jacob Middleton's partial season with the Minnesota Wild after he was acquired at the trade deadline. We look at what Middleton brought to the team in addition to his play this season if he figures into the long-term plans. And we look at uh, the Wild's decor going forward um, and look at some of the things that the Wild may need to do to uh, try to kind of freshen that unit up. Uh, All that and more coming up on today's episode. My name is Seth Topol, host of Locked on Wild, veteran Minnesota sports content producer with well over a decade's worth of experience covering your favorite Minnesota teams. And now uh, here at the helm of Lockdown Wild, navigating you through the offseason. The uh, NHL draft is about three weeks away. And so we uh, continue to evaluate the uh, player seasons for the Minnesota Wild for this past year. And uh, we move now to our first defenseman that we will talk about. And that was one of the new acquisitions at the trade deadline, Mr. Jacob Middleton. And at least for me, This was the unexpected move or one of the unexpected moves at the trade deadline, but made a lot of sense as to what Bill Guerin was trying to add. And Middleton on a Sharks team that really wasn't all that great was kind of an an unsung hero and uh, was an emerging defenseman uh, for the Sharks. And so the Wild flipped Capo Kakinen. Uh, to San Jose in exchange for Jacob Middleton. And Middleton, I think the ability for him to just slot in on that uh, top D pairing with Jared Spurgeon, I think that tells the whole story is that uh, the team expected that Middleton was going to be able to come in and play a uh, pretty big role as a defense first defenseman. And not only that, but uh, bringing a little size to the equation, bringing a little oomph to his game. And I thought he played very well uh, for the Minnesota Wild uh, from the the moment he was acquired. Now, we learned once the season was done that uh, Jared Spurgeon was uh, playing through a, uh, a core injury amongst many other wild players that were just trying to kind of gut it out through the rest of the season. And so Middleton was, uh, was able to, uh, to hop in and uh, cover some ground for, uh, for Jared Spurgeon as he played through that injury down the stretch and Middleton more than held his own. I mean, you, uh, you look at the numbers uh, for Middleton throughout uh, the course of the uh, the rest of the regular season after he was acquired, he ended up being a uh, plus seven in the month of April uh, for the Wilds. Uh, not a huge points guy. Ended the season with uh, with fourteen points, but was a plus ten for the year. And uh, you look at some of the uh, the other stats that he uh, brought to the table as well. Uh, just really brought uh, you know a calming presence on that um on that top D pairing for the Minnesota Wild and so uh, a great move by uh, by Garen you know it it just it seemed like at the time Capo really didn't have much 
of a future here with Cam Talbot as the starter and just never did anything to really separate himself from Cam. And so he became expendable. And, of course, the Wilds went and got Marc-Andre Fleury to fill that backup spot. But I would say of the deadline acquisitions, definitely the one that performed the best. Um, just, you know, even in that postseason series against the Blues, um, had uh, some really solid moments and was one of the few wild defensemen who was um, not like just a hideous minus in that series. And I think that in and of itself is a topic that we will discuss later on in today's episode. But, you know, you bring Middleton in and he is somebody that the Wilds would like to um, involve in their future plans uh, because of, of his play on the ice, but also just that element of size and physicality that the Wilds sorely needed at the trade deadline. They, uh, they sought to acquire some of that. Uh, and Middleton, you know, ended up being just a really solid acquisition for this team. So as far as a letter grade goes for Middleton, uh, factoring in the postseason for the team as a whole, uh, again, I feel, I feel like a B plus or an A minus, again, is, uh, is a solid spot for uh, for Middleton just for what he was able to bring to this this wild decor that was pretty up and down throughout uh portions of the season um and, and especially in the playoffs uh, for what he brought to this team and and what he could potentially bring to this team going forward um just just a really solid acquisition and uh, I think it's one that definitely worked out and would love nothing more than for that playoff stash to uh, find a more permanent home here with the Minnesota Wilds. But uh, that depends on a couple of other factors. Um, most notably, the uh, salary cap situation for the Minnesota Wilds. So B plus to A minus. We'll, we'll go with an A minus for, uh, for Jacob Middleton um, and brought some good elements to this Wild team. Hopefully something that he can bring going forward. Uh, now, as far as what his contract could look like and uh, things along those lines, we'll take a look at how Middleton could factor into the future plans for the Minnesota Wild. That is coming up after this. You know how our friends at Built are always coming out with amazing new flavors for their bars? Well, this time Built has truly outdone themselves with a the brand new mud, mud pie flavor. And for the first time ever, Built is introducing the new mud, mud pie flavor in both mud pie bar and mud pie puff. I'm not kidding you. I had one before recording today. If you're not sure what mud pie tastes like, well, if you're a chocolate fan, you better sit down. The new Mud Pie Bar is rich whipped cream and chocolate mousse smothered in 100% real chocolate and topped with cookies and cream crumble. If that's not enough to convince you, uh, these bars contain only six, 150 calories but are packed with 16 grams of protein and 8 grams of sugar. So uh, all of the normal goodness you'd expect in uh, anything Mud Pie flavored with a fraction of the bad stuff. So if you want to get in on these delicious mud pie bars and mud pie puffs, head to built.com, use the promo code LOCKED15, and you'll get 15% off your order. Again, use the promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. Continuing today's episode of Locked on Wild listeners, we have an important favor to ask. We have put together a survey so we can learn more about listeners like you and make your favorite Locked On podcasts even better. This is your opportunity to tell us what you like and don't like about Locked On podcasts. So head to LockedOnPodcasts.com slash survey right now to get started. It won't take very long, and everyone that completes a survey can qualify for a chance to win one of 10 $100 Ticketmaster gift cards. To take our audience survey, go to LockedOnPodcasts.com slash survey. Thank you in advance for the help. So Jacob Middleton, 
he is uh, coming off of a two-year, $1.4 million contract uh, after signing his entry-level deal with the uh, the San Jose Sharks. Uh, he completed that and now stands to make uh, a little bit of a raise over his uh, 750K uh, base salary for this past season. Now, as far as what that would result in for a raise, well, I think I think for Middleton, you probably could get him to somewhere between two and three million um, per year. And considering his performance, I think if you could get him on a two or three year deal for that, I'd be absolutely in to make that happen. Now, the problem lies in some of the other things that uh, the Wild are going to need to try to get done this season. Uh, if you look at some of the other contracts they have on the books um, and uh, what they will be spending uh, and what uh, they have coming off the books. Now, there are uh, a couple of players who could potentially help offset some of this cost coming off the books. You've got, of course, um, the likes of Nick Bugstad, Nick Delorier, Jordy Ben. That doesn't add up to a whole heck of a lot. And you have other areas that are going to need to be addressed for this roster. Um, you've got whatever happens with Kevin Fiala, kind of the big picture item that I feel like has to really be solved first before any of these other moves can be taken care of. Um, there are ways to... There are ways to make this work. Uh, but you look at the rest of this, you look at this decor that is locked in at this current moment. Jared Spurgeon, $7.6 million for this season and for every season all the way to 2026-2027. Matt Dumba moving into the final year of his contract at $6 million. Jonas Burdeen at $6 million every year to 2026-2027. Dmitry Kulikov at 2.25 million and has a um, modified no trade, as does Matt Dumba, as does Jonas Brodeen. Uh, you've also got Alex Goligoski, who signed that uh, two year, four million total extension, which uh, keeps him in Minnesota for the next couple of seasons. And you've got John Merrill, who is signed at 1.2 million for the next three years as well. Factor in the uh, the other part of this, uh, you have Kalen Addison down in Iowa, who has seemed like he's been the guy who is going to get one of those vacated spots um, at some point. You um, you just would assume that he's going to get one of those NHL spots in the top six. And it just hasn't worked out that way yet. Now, that's not to say that it won't, but that's a lot in front of him that is tied into a big amount of money and money to the point where it would be hard even if you had people that were interested. Even if you had people that were interested in acquiring one of those contracts, it would still be hard to move for anything substantial in return. And so this leads into kind of my um, my final point to, uh, to carry us home here today is that um, it, it just, I, I don't know what we do with this current decor because I think we saw a pretty good um, indicator in the postseason that it's just it's not it did not perform up to the level that we have come to expect 
But I think there are some other, um, I think there are some other factors that play into that. And so um, we'll finish today's episode by just asking the question of, is the Wild's current decor holding them back? And uh, we'll try to get to the bottom of that to finish off today's episode of Locked on Wild after this. Final segment of today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. We've got a lot of money tied into this uh, current defensive core for the Minnesota Wild. Now, part of that is the uh, Wild's buyouts to Ryan Suter and Zach Parisi. But if you look at uh, some of the spending for uh, the Wilds by position, you have 34% of the cap in defense to seven players. And uh, the salaries, we we touched on them already. Jared Spurgeon, 7.6. Matt Dumba and Jonas Brodeen at six apiece. Dmitry Kulikov, 2.25. Alex Goligoski, two. John Merrill, 1.2. And Kalen Addison, 795,000. Um, we, we discussed the fact that uh, it was revealed after the season was done that Jared Spurgeon was dealing with a core injury down the stretch. We we said the same thing about Matt Dumba uh, with his um, broken ribs and uh, I believe it was a collapsed it was a collapsed or a punctured lung that he was dealing with down the stretch, and so some of that some of that can explain. Um, you know, decreased performance uh, for these players. But y- you look at some of the other things that uh, just did not work out well for the Wild this year. I mean, you're relying on Jordy Ben as your depth fill-in. And Jordy Ben, you know, a, a, a defenseman that brings you a little more size, but just no mobility really whatsoever. And so he had some moments during the season where he really just was, was not a good fit with his team. And you look at a guy like John Merrill, who started off the season playing pretty well, that, uh, that third line pairing of Kulikov and Merrill to start the year, they, they were playing pretty good. And as the season wore on that performance started to dip and uh, it got to the point where in the postseason against the St. Louis blues with all of the, uh, the size that they possess Kulikov ended up getting benched for Alex Goligoski, who then was not super good himself. And it, it just, it led to a situation where it didn't really matter who you threw out there on defense other than save one or two people, um, Jonas Brodeen and probably uh, Jacob Middleton, it didn't matter who you threw out there. They just nobody really played that well. And so you look at this team, this franchise that has relied on has been a team that has relied on, um, being gritty being a more defense oriented team and now with the switch that's been made and the flip to this is Kirill Kaprizov's team and this is a team that's you know, trying to win and trying to score a lot of goals it feels like a franchise that's kind of stuck in the middle right now and you look at just the amount of money being allocated and it's going to be tough because if the durability stuff continues to be a problem, and I don't think I'm 
I don't think I'm throwing out anything groundbreaking there, but you look at guys and we, we touched on this in just looking at the reasons to keep Kevin Fiala as opposed to keeping Matt Dumba, like the durability is starting to become a problem. And, you know, with, with Spurgeon too, like he has had a lot of injuries over the, uh, the past few seasons and is a guy who has, has topped out, has played 82 games one time. Now he has to this point been a very good defenseman and has been, you know, one of the more underrated defensemen in the league. But it brings me to this bigger issue is that's all well and good. But if guys aren't on the ice, they're missing chunks of time and you are replacing them in the lineup with Jordy Ben. Like, there needs to be, there needs to be a kind of step back look at how this decor is constructed. And, you know, it's, it's not going to be a situation that will be easy for um, Bill Guerin to fix overnight, but as good of a step in the right direction as uh, the Jacob Middleton acquisition seemed to be for this wild team, you got some of these other moves, the Goligoski extension, which I, I probably would not have gone that route. Um, the Merrill and Kulikov um, signings looked good at the beginning of the year. And they they kind of fizzled out, and then you have the decisions to you have the decisions to let you know Ian Cole go, and let Carson Susi go to the uh, the Kraken in, in the expansion draft to try to protect Capo Kakinen. Now, how that all played out, Seattle did some strange things in the expansion draft. So, who's to say that? They didn't try to go after Capo. But anyway, the point being is that you're seeing some of these guys that performed well, say, last year. In Cole and Susie, they're gone, and the guys that replaced them didn't really match that level. And then your back-end depth, you know, it's we're a long ways from, and this might be, this might be a hot take, but we're a long ways away from the days where Brad Hunt was kind of your your fill-in super utility defenseman. Or here, how about this? You've got a guy down in Iowa, Kalen Addison, who could be that fill-in defenseman until a spot opens up. But letting some of those guys go, not having super quality uh, depth to fill injury spots and having some guys who the injury questions are starting to become a yearly thing. It's not a good recipe. And so I would love to see Middleton back because I think he represents a step in the right direction, but there's a lot of work to do uh, to try to kind of clean things up. And it's it's not going to be easy for Garen. I am imagining, based off of what we saw with the moves, that uh, this decor will be pretty close to uh, as it is currently constructed. That will be what we see uh, next year. So it, it's, it's possible, um, certainly, that we see some guys step it up. But there's going to have to be a lot of that, and it's that's that's just kind of the the truth of the matter. So, great season for Jacob Middleton. I hope he is part of the future plan for this team, uh, so that we can start to kind of uh, fix 
some of the parts on that uh, that back end uh, gradually to just try to kind of swap them out and get some uh, get some new blood in here. So that's uh, that's our episode for today. Now that your first listen of the day is done, make sure you check out the Locked On NHL podcast to get a full recap of the Stanley Cup conference finals and a look ahead to Avs versus Lightning for the Stanley Cup trophy. Uh, that's starting up on Wednesday, so make sure you check out the Locked On NHL podcast wherever you listen to your podcasts. Also, make sure to keep up to date with us. We will keep you as up-to-date as possible on all things Minnesota Wild. So hit subscribe, hit follow wherever you listen or watch. We are available pretty much anywhere you listen to your podcasts. And also make sure to follow us on social media as well. Lockdown Wild is keeping you updated every Monday through Friday with new episodes coming out as part of the Locked On Sports Podcast Network.